The Energy Technologies Institute, or the ETI, is a public-private partnership between major corporates, including BP, Caterpillar, Eon, EDF, Rolls-Royce and Shell, and the UK government. And we're focused on two things, which is uh, a demonstration of large engineering and technology systems for low carbon energy for the future and analysis and modelling of the UK energy system to understand where we should be making those big investments. The targets we've got of minus 34% CO2 for 2020 and minus 80% CO2 for 2050 lead us to quite radically different energy systems for the future. Our job is to identify where are the big challenges in getting there and then where we can make an investment in technology to solve some of those, we'll try and do that. We're already looking at something in excess of 5,000 new wind turbines going into the North Sea. Uh, we've got 21 million homes in the UK that we're probably going to have to retrofit with energy efficiency technologies by 2050. And then we've got 28 million cars on our roads, very few of which will still be here by 2050. So these are massive rollout problems that we've got and the scale of what we've got to do. No one company or no one group can answer this. It's only by working together in collaboration that we can really start to get effective solutions. E.ON is essentially the biggest investor-owned power and gas company in the world. It's essentially there to generate electricity and supply gas uh, to a range of customers uh, in a number of uh, countries, primarily in Europe but also in the United States. What we're trying to do is address an energy trilemma, as our chief executive Paul Goldby has phrased it, which essentially is trying to balance the security of supply uh, for, for energy, uh, its cost and making it affordable to most people, and also its impact on the environment. I mean, it's clear you can actually spend a lot of money trying to tidy up the environment uh, and actually coming in with clean technologies, but they're not necessarily cheap, so we must actually become be, be much more um, tuned in to the need to reduce the cost of these technologies. Security of supply is of course an issue as well. Uh, if you actually put all your eggs into one basket and uh, you effectively have a problem with that technology, uh, then the whole infrastructure will, will collapse. So you do need to actually have this, these three conflicting impacts on energy supply covered. E.ON, as big as it is, effectively is not a manufacturer of technology, it's a user of technology. And what we need to do is to actually have a mix of technologies available to us. So why not, why not work, essentially, with others uh, that are actually deemed as partners? I mean, we, we do compete uh, in, in, our sort of heart, in, our, in our heartland, in our marketplace, for the supply of electricity and gas. But otherwise, we're not competing with uh, manufacturers, we're not complete, competing with our basic primary fuel suppliers, so why not work with them? In 2009, we invested £54 million into 17 project areas across the whole spread of renewable technologies like offshore wind, but also through into electrification and transport, where we've got an £11 million project looking not so much at the technology, but at some of the social uh, issues to do with how people want to use electric cars. How, when will they want to plug them in? So will they want to plug them in in bad weather or in the dark or so on? They want to charge their cars at work or at home, all these kind of things. We need to understand that so we can understand what kind of electricity infrastructure, what kind of grid have we got to build to supply power for those people at the right time and in the right places. The UK, uh, I think, wants to demonstrate leadership in, in trying to create a low-carbon future. Um, E.ON UK uh, essentially is part of a group of companies that can actually make that happen. We do appreciate that there are here and now problems in the UK to solve, um, but what we're actually trying to do, I think, is to demonstrate to the world some leadership and hopefully those technologies will be transferable to developing nations where of course the, uh, the CO2 uh, emissions are going up. Getting to 2020 for the UK and reducing our CO2 emissions by 34% is a, a huge challenge. It's at least £100 billion of investment to the UK, so it's a big cost. But it's also a very big business opportunity. This investment has to happen if we're going to meet the targets. Uh, and so. There is a huge opportunity from a business point of view to actually make this happen and to make it happen here in the UK and create not just a low carbon uh, energy system for the UK but to start creating this true low carbon economy for the UK as well.